All right, guys, today we're getting back to work on the Subaru. So my goal, my optimistic goal by the end of this video is to start the car and, I mean, there's no reason why we shouldn't be able to drive it, brakes work, clutch works, all that stuff. So really just, if we get it started, we can drive it around. Um, so that, that is my optimistic goal by the end of this video. I'd love that. Like have the front end together, have the car driving, and then it's just like all the knickknack stuff, you know, we've got, need to do like tune and coilovers and wheels and tires and brakes and stuff, but like driving is a big step. Oh, and exhaust, I need to figure that out. I need to order a part, I, distract. Okay, so uh, I was working on some tinkery stuff this morning. So I get the fuel lines hooked up and clamped and all that stuff still running wiring. Like I need to tighten down this alternator wire. I need to figure out better routing for this throttle cable. I don't really understand how it's supposed to go. That's not like pretty jank. Um, so yeah, just working on all that kind of stuff and then we will move on to the bigger stuff like the radiator, the fenders, the headlights, the front bumper, all that stuff. So lots to do, lots of progress to make. Lots of progress out there for the taken. So we're gonna go take some progress. That, that doesn't work like that, it doesn't. <laughs> oh, one thing while we're here, let's do a quick tool time. A lot of people have been asking about this stubby impact. Oh, I should replace the battery before we do this test. A lot of people have been asking about this guy. I absolutely love this thing. This is probably, this has probably become my most used tool, I would say. I would venture to say my most, definitely my most used tool. And probably Pin's most used tool as well. He uses it all the time too. Uh, amazing, amazing tool though. It's a lot stronger than I expected it would be. I thought it would be good for, you know, like the same stuff that a little nut runner drive is good for. Like 10 mil bolt, head bolts, 12 mil head bolts. You know, you have to like a 14 and then anything 17 or above, you'd run, you'd want to run like the big half inch or three eighths impact. So I, I was mistaken. I, I want to show you. I'm going to see if I can take a lug nut off. I haven't tried this before. So I don't know if it's going to be quite this strong, but it seems like it. Okay, let's see without changing the battery. Ha! Ha! Wow, that's crazy. Ben was talking about getting one of these as like his main guy and using it for lug nuts. And I was like, no, you want the bigger one. But like, look at this. Wow, that's crazy. I, I have to say, I'm, I'm impressed. The part number to this thing is 2554-20. So if you guys want to look it up, I'll try to remember to put the link below. But uh, it's been a while since we've done a tool time. And when I got it, I was like, I'll give you guys an update in a couple weeks. And I use it all every day. And I just hadn't thought to give you guys an update. So there's the update. Works amazing. So anyway, uh, back to work, I guess. All right, we got most of like the knickknack stuff done. I got to figure out where this hose goes. Maybe it goes over here. Where does this come from? Yeah, there's just a couple more hoses left to deal with. I gotta remount my catch can. I had it mounted here. I made a bracket for it, but this AC line's in the way. We got those all hooked up. Uh, all the wiring we could find hooked up. So I think we're pretty much good there. We, we're switching from this crappy vent to atmosphere blow off valve to a proper recirc valve. So I need to throw that on so we can throw the intercooler on. Okay, so we are switching from a vent to atmosphere blow off valve to a recirculating blow off valve. So what does that mean? Well, it vents to atmosphere is just that. It vents to the atmosphere, recirculating, recirculates it back in the system. So why is that important? Why does that matter? So imagine you're full throttle down the road, trying to impress your girlfriend, squirrel runs out. You can't run over a squirrel. That's not gonna impress your girlfriend. So you have to let off the gas. Well, your turbo is making all this boost and cramming it into the intake. So when you let off the gas, your throttle plate closes and then that boost has to go somewhere. It can't go into the engine and make power. It has to go somewhere. So that's what the blow off valve is for. The blow off valve expels that air. Now vent atmosphere just expels it into the atmosphere. A recirc recirculates it back to the system. So it blows it through this and then right back here and back into the turbo. Why is that important? Well, your air reading on a car like this is from your mass airflow sensor. So it reads how much air comes in and then determines, okay, well that much air is going into the engine, so we need X amount of fuel. Well, when you blow off some of that air to the atmosphere, now there's less air than the ECU thinks there is. So the ECU supplies too much fuel because there's not as much air as it thought. And then you get weird stumble issues. So you'll have, you know, if you like let off throttle mid-turn and go to get back on throttle, it'll like hiccup because it's, it just spikes rich for a second. Um, or like the worst and most annoying one for me is when you get off throttle like coming to a stop and it, the car stumbles and wants to die because it just hits peg rich. So um, to me, any, especially like any draw through math car, really any math car, you're gonna want a, uh, a recirculating ball valve. The car is just gonna run tr just so much better. You know, like a vent atmosphere sound cool and all, but if you wanna run a, run a vent atmosphere, you need to run a map sensor set up where you're measuring pressure off the intake so you're not getting incorrect measurements of how much air you have. 
because basically it'd be blowing off the air before the reading, if that makes any sense. So that is why I decided to go with the research. So we went with this Cobb unit. This is a new unit from them. So this thing holds a crazy amount of pressure. I'll put a video in here, right here, so you guys can see. So now that you guys know what it is and why we're doing it, snap transition. That honestly took about as long as the snap took. That was super easy. Okay, we're ready to install the intercooler and then I think we're ready for a test fire. Well, we are about ready for our first start. Oil change is done, new in Mishimoto uh, intake setups on. There's a, a plate that basically isolates it to make it a cold air intake, so you're not getting all of the engine bay heat, you're just getting heat from the front, uh, or <laughs> heat from the front, cool air from the front. Uh, but I, I don't wanna put it on right now, I wanna get everything else figured out first. So I just wanna get it started up, see how it runs now. We do have the STI injectors in it now, which it didn't have before. So I have a hunch that it will be hard to start, but we do have a cob setup that we can put on it. Um, it just might take us a little time of tinkering to uh, get all that done. So I'm hoping it'll at least like start up and run as it is right now. So we'll find out. The Subaru goes up in flames. Ben just put the uh, jump box on backwards and didn't understand why it was beeping at him. <laughs> all right, we're gonna try to start it. Oh, I mean, I don't even know if we have ignition lines or anything. How is the power hooked up? Another wire that goes to the alternator, probably. There seems like there's definitely got to be some, you know? Yeah. Okay, guys, we're not very good Subaru mechanics. <laughs> Might call us monkey mechanics. We fixed the issue, it was because we didn't tighten any of the battery. Well, we made some good progress. We did get the Subaru started, which is super exciting. It's the first time this thing's ran in, oh, what, like four or five months, something like that. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. And it ran way better than it did before. I'm so glad we decided to do this route, going with the normal GC8 chassis harness and the iWire merge service to the WRX engine harness, as opposed to the hodgepodge of putting an 03 WRX entire car harness in this car, because that was a mess. Like nothing worked right, everything works now. Like it, it's like factory. It's like factory as opposed to like a, a sketchily wired car. So really, really glad we did that. Motor runs way better. We're still having the issue. Um, if the math's plugged in, it runs like terrible. So I'm assuming the math is bad, which I need to get an OEM replacement anyway. So that's okay, not a big deal. Uh, main problem we're having, um, and which is why we're not driving it right now, is this hard line here that feeds the turbo, so it bolts to the block and then goes into the turbo. 
So this is our high pressure feed line. It is cracked down there at the bottom and it's just spraying oil everywhere. We thought it was the return, so we replaced the return, which it really needed it anyway. It was also pretty bad. It's starting to fall apart, so definitely worth replacing, but that was not our culprit. So I'm gonna try to track down another factory wine. I'd much rather have like a factory hard wine than a braided wine, but if we can't find that, we can definitely just make a, a banjo to banjo braided wine work. So either way, we'll get that figured out, but uh, kind of at a stopping point for tonight. We'll pick this back up in the morning. We got a lot of work to do tomorrow. I'll see you guys in the morning. All right, we are getting back to work on the, what did someone, someone came up with a, a good name. I remember it, I remember it, Miss Jackson. It's perfect, I mean, jamming out the 2000 stuff, Outcast, love Outcast. Sorry, Miss Jackson, and we're missing parts, so Miss Jackson. So that's what we're gonna call the Subaru, I think, Miss Jackson. Anyway, uh, yeah, uh, I think today, I guess I'll do, I guess here's my plans, here's my plans. I'm thinking, put the radiator in, hoses in, fans in, um, coolant reservoir, the shield for this uh, air filter setup, this Mishimoto intake we have, uh, just wrap up pretty much everything. So do all that stuff in the engine bay, get the front end back on, the fenders, the headlights, the wiring, the bumper, the hood, all that stuff. So that is basically my goal for the end of the day, basically be done with the car, aside from changing that turbo feed, which we have and making an exhaust. We obviously have other things to do. We've got uh, coilovers to go on and I need to order some brakes. We're going to do a brake upgrade. We need to get some wheels and tires. So, I mean, there's other stuff that's not it, but as far as what we can physically do right now, I want to get everything done. I missed the singing, guys. I'm sorry. I tried to get them. Boy. Camera takes too long to record. All right, so this is a Mishimoto intake. This thing's actually really sweet. So it's got an aluminum math housing that's like welded in. You just un like unbolt your math out of the plastic, out of the plastic housing, put it in this one. It's got this really nice box. So this is actually meant for an 03 WRX, which is what this engine came out of. I wasn't sure if it was gonna fit, but it seems like we might be good. It might be a little too high. Uh, worst case, we can run it without the box. We have some more 03 WRX parts. We have radiator and fan shroud for an 03 WRX. Also the one, obviously the car this engine came out of. To make them work, we have this piece, which is from iWire. So it bolts on to where the GC radiator mounts would go and then offsets them to fit the WRX radiator. So this is all we need to make this WRX fan, shroud, setup, and radiator fit. Which, by the way, this is an incredibly well-built radiator. This thing is super nice. I love how much time Mishimoto puts into their design work of their project. So you've got all the mounting points with, with threaded holes and everything to mount your fan shroud with those tabs on the fan shroud setup. OEM plugs, which isn't gonna work for us because we have GC chassis harness, but still, like, basically they make full drop-in setups, which is cool. I, I haven't seen many people that do that. Usually you gotta splice some stuff. Usually you gotta come up with some mounting stuff. Their stuff is like perfectly bolted in and works together, which is, is really rad. But yeah, so time to throw these bad boys in. We got uh, some Mishimoto silicone radiator hoses as well, hose clamps. Then we got everything we need. neighbor Al to uh, help him package parts. How was your first day, Al? Your first day as Ben's new employee. He said he's gonna pay me on a rainy day though. I give him Budweiser's, I give him two Budweiser's an hour. That's a pretty solid deal. <laughs> but the other thing is, the other thing is I realize I don't drink. Oh yeah, yeah. No, Al never drinks. All right, radiator is in, hoses are in, fans are in, everything. I do need to cut the fan wiring and splice it for the GC connector. This is a WRX connector, which you don't have a WRX harness anymore. Um, I did have to shorten the hoses on this side a little bit at the radiator, since um, the, the engine compartment's a little smaller in this car than a Subaru, like a 03 WRX, the radiator would be further forward um, and the hoses would be perfect fit. But since it's so much closer, which it is a very tight squeeze, I had to uh, chop them down a little bit. So we got that all done, all good. It means we can fill it up with water soon. So what I wanna go ahead and do now is the body panels because it'll look so much cooler when it's got the front end back on it. So 
fenders, headlights, bumper, all that stuff. Fingers crossed my hood closes with this thing. I think it will based on this, but it always looks weird when you look at like an engine without the fenders on it and stuff like a engine bay, it always looks like everything's too high, but it's usually not. Okay, let's get to it. So if you guys remember, Carol has been, I parked my car over there. I told him, be careful when you pull your trailer out. Don't hit my car. Cause I'm not gonna hit your car. I walk out a couple days later and the car is drugged like five feet. He's like, oh yeah, you know, I hit it, it's fine though. So I go to put the bumper on and I'm like, man, why won't this thing go on? Like I'm really struggling with this. And I realized that's one of like the mounts that keeps it secure. And this is where the trailer hit. So it bent that whole mount over. I can't get it to bend back, so I'm gonna have to cut it off so we can get the bumper on. Do you have anything to say for yourself? I don't have anything to say, Dad. Go to your room. Check it out! It's a freaking car again! The hood shuts, fits perfect. So used to the struggle with the Miata and the hood never fitting right. Uh, we got everything in. This is our cruise control module, which we should have cruise control. Uh, but it's, I think this one's from the WRX. I'm gonna need to track down a GC one with the right plug. I checked the powering for the rest of the car because I didn't do that yesterday. When we started it, because I was focused on finding the oil leak, but everything seems to work. Like the AC blower works, the lights work, tail lights, front lights, every, I mean, everything seems to be working, which is, Awesome, I didn't, well, you know, it was just something I was like, man, I didn't even check to make sure all the chassis stuff was working. The passenger window won't roll down, but the, the thing's clicking it, so I don't know if it's a bad motor or what. Obviously, we don't have the rear doors plugged in currently because we don't have the right rear door harnesses. I gotta find those. Uh, but I mean, all in all, she's complete, she's a car. I think I'm gonna put my catch can here because it's actually really easy to route. So this is one valve cover, that's the other, and then there's a tube coming off that to go into the intake. So we'll just splice into this and run it over to the catch can and then out to the intake so that we catch a lot of that oil in the catch can before it gets routed back to the intake. So I wanna figure that out and get that mounted. I mean, other than that, oh, we gotta do fuel pump too. So catch can fuel pump, and we're pretty much caught up with the car until we get that oil feed line and uh, exhaust stuff. You hyped, Ben? Dude, I'm pretty hyped. I'm, I'm honestly pretty high. Yeah, it was a bare shell like Dude, three working days ago. Shelf. Yeah, my shelf was full to the brim. Like this whole shelf down here was full of Subaru stuff. All, all the new stuff spilled over into this shelf once we got the Miata fixed because that was the Miata shelf. And then all the way across up there, seats, body panels, carpet, all that stuff. I need to move my Miata bumpers over yeah. now that I have my shelf back. Miata runs, 350Z runs, Subaru we runs. We probably shouldn't say this. I'm oh, hyped though. Too late though. I'm hyped though, it is too late. We've already <laughs> talked about it. Yeah, in this window, I think I need to fix the regulator. It's, uh, it just kind of like wants to fall down and then it stops, but like I said, everything seems to be working. So that is freaking awesome. Friggin' awesome. Friggin' sick, mate. <laughs> now I'm really stoked though. Like I said, I mean, basically, I guess this would be the fourth like working day from bare shell. So we literally went from like bare shell to this, like full car again in like four to five days of actual work. So that's awesome. Okay, back to work. Update you guys on my progress. Dude, I am so hyped on how together this thing is. Like even the little stuff. So Ben had these rubber grommets we needed to center the radiator. 
Uh, I guess they're still a little loose, but regardless, we got rubber grommets there. We got this thing, which is also broken, but it holds the hood prop, the hood props in, like every, like all this little stuff that it's hard to find and know where it goes and all that stuff. We found or found replacements and got it in, like all, all the little stuff, because this is going to be a street car. You know, it's, it's a lot easier to build a track car where you're taking all this stuff out, but to like put everything in and make it all work, and especially when it's a project where it was kind of scattered to begin with, I don't know, it's, it's like really satisfying, like everything you put in. So anyway, we got our catch can in. I really like this one. This is like Mishimoto's like carbon fiber one, but it's like a quick release um, thing. So it's super easy to change, just like that, wow. Uh, compared to like a normal one where you have to unscrew it all the way. So perfect for a daily driver, it's gonna get a lot of uh, miles on it. So hopefully, yeah, it should definitely clear the hood. Check the hood again, but I mean, all in all, the interior is about complete. Got one last thing to do, which is the fuel pump. I think it's under the back seat. So I need to throw that in, I'll show you guys what we got. All right, so this is the pump we've got. It's a Dietchworks uh, 340 liter per hour. So it's a really, really capable pump but it fits in the stock location. They came out with a line of these pumps that are application specific, which is awesome because there's universal pumps and like they kind of work, you zip time in, whatever. These are meant specifically for, you know, each vehicle's fuel hanger so they fit well and you don't have to worry about having issues with them falling off. Because I actually bought a car super cheap that way. The guy thought it had a blown head gasket. What it turned out being was the fuel pump was just a universal pump and it had fallen off the hanger and sucked to the bottom of the tank. So it was losing fuel pressure. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's the pump we're going to use. I use it in the Miata with E85 making close to 400 wheel, like 370, and it's still get plenty of fuel. We're not running out, so should be plenty good for this car. Pump gas, 300 wheel-ish. So we're going to throw it in. It's a, it's a little bit of a weird spot for it. Is my light still back here? I'm used to 240s where the pumps are easy to get to, but this one's all the way back there. So we got to change that out real quick. And then we are pretty much done. As well, the Subaru is finished up. I wish we could start it again with the new pump and start messing with getting the proper tune on it and all that stuff, but we will have to wait on that. So I've got all the exhaust stuff I need ordered. I've got the oil pressure line that I need ordered. Um, those should all be here within a couple days, which is super exciting. Hopefully by the end of the week, we'll have that stuff and we can be jamming out on it late this week, this weekend, and be driving it around. Cause we really can't drive it until we put an exhaust on it anyway. Cause it's just like, hot exhaust gas like right into the wiring so we definitely need to get that done first so it's not a huge deal the oil line was uh ruptured but yeah we'll get it all fixed up in the next episode hopefully get it running and driving right and then we can move on to suspension and interior stuff so uh thanks for watching thanks for subscribing i will see you guys next time we might be going up and picking a very special surprise up in the next couple days so see you then Goodbye.